It worked. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Greetings, everyone. Hello. I am Melanie Buchanan. I teach the Senior Portfolio and AP Art and Design classes here at Little Rock Christian Academy. Um, first note, while this is kind of like formal, it's not formal. So if you want to get up from your table, there are all these beautiful chairs up here at the front. So your back's not turned around. So please feel free to come on forward, get where you're comfortable. If you want to pull eight billion chairs around one table, do that as well. Please help yourself. Um, so I wanted to just explain a little bit about what Honor Senior Portfolio and AP Art and Design is. This tonight is going to be a display of the culmination of over a year of work where students have investigated a question, digging into that question and then making art in response. And for some of these kids, they started thinking about this their eighth or their ninth grade year when they first came to a portfolio night and they saw what this is all about. And some of them came up to me like their ninth grade year and were like, okay, I've had this great idea for my senior portfolio. I'm going to do this. And I'm like, okay, I think you'll change your mind. Why don't you go ahead and you can start. Not calling anybody out. Um, so, so this is a ton of work that they have put into this art. Um, they have poured their hearts and their souls into it. They have made pieces and been told, go back and remake that piece. And then they turn it back in and I tell them again, go back and remake that piece. And then their friends are like, oh, but have you thought of doing this? And they change their whole way of working. Um, so it's a lot, a lot of work. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for helping to honor them for that, that endeavor. They, they have been through the trial and this is the night of celebration. The only difference between Honor Senior Portfolio and AP Art and Design is whether or not you have to talk tonight. So the seniors are all required to get up here and tell you about their work. The AP Art and Design students, and a lot of the seniors will be both, are required to submit to the AP Board and they will get a score back from the AP Board based on whether or not their art is good enough. Um, we like to remind them that the AP Board does not know all. So let, that's, they're not the end all be all. We know who is. Um, I would like to just take a few minutes to thank a few people. I said this at the beginning of the meal, but I just would be remiss if I did not say it one more time. I need to thank my co-sponsors who are actually in the room now, Miss Kimmy Harrison, Miss June Hendren, and Miss Terry Simpson. Thank you all so much for all that you do. I would be absolutely nothing without my fearless leader, Lynn Beardsley. Um, she has elevated the arts programs at Little Rock Christian far and above what any of us thought was possible. Um, so thank you so much, Lynn. Um, and then I would also like to give a shout out to Jamie Smith and Charity Workman and Stephanie Sutherland. They are always behind the scenes working, doing, um, life is impossible without them. So thank you so much to them. Um, and then again, I want to be sure to thank our Friends of the Arts. And for those of you who just came in, that you can find more information about Friends of the Arts in the back of your program. I keep wanting to call it a bulletin. Um, and so if you're interested in joining Friends of the Arts, we'd love to help you be able to do that. They help sponsor and support and underwrite all of the amazing things we do here at Little Rock Christian in the Arts. Um, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Justin Smith to come and to open us in a word of prayer. Well, thank you, Ms. Buchanan. Uh, will you all bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, Lord. We thank you that we can all gather here tonight to appreciate beauty. And so, Lord, we thank you for the gifts and the talents that you have bestowed upon all of our students at Little Rock Christian, in particular these students tonight who have their artwork featured. Lord, we thank you about the process of making art. We know that in discipleship to you, it is a walk in formation, and such is the life of the artist, constantly forming, constantly creating, constantly revising. 
making things that are good and true and beautiful. And so, Lord, the artwork that is on this display tonight, would it bring you honor and praise and glory? Father, we thank you for the people who have been instrumental in the lives of these students, beginning first with their parents and their grandparents, many of whom are here tonight. We thank you for their investment, for their discipleship, for their love and care, for their challenge and for their accountability in the lives of these students. And then we also thank you for the many teachers who love and adore these students and want to see them flourish. We have math teachers in the room and biblical worldview teachers, and we have teachers from the younger grades and teachers in senior class, and then the art teachers. And we know that a great school can't be great without great teachers, and we're thankful for the many great teachers that make up Warriorville. So tonight, Lord, would you be honored? Would you be honored? Would you receive our praises? Would you be with us as we pursue you? Thank you, Lord, for tonight. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I'd like to begin with our first student. Um, our first senior is Miss Eva Saber. Um, Eva came to me after having taken drawing one and painting one, which is, is an untraditional route. Um, but she did phenomenal in both of those classes. And when she came into my studio, honor Studio Art 2 class, she skipped Studio 1. She could already draw hyper-realistic portraits and did so regularly. And it, it was like a cakewalk for her. She's amazingly talented. And so this year she came into Senior Portfolio and AP and capstone and all the other things that she's doing and she wanted to challenge herself but just challenging herself technically wasn't enough so she asked herself what can I do to branch out it's kind of like digging deep and branching out and bearing fruit what can I do um, and so she decided that she was going to dig into how can I make my art more expressive and how can I make my art more colorful and have more emotion in it? Sophomore and junior year, Eva avoided color at all costs most of the time. And you'll see in her work tonight that it's full of color and life and it's vibrant. Um, she came to class this year with a variety of really unique challenges. She's highly involved in athletics. Her father moved to Kentucky at the beginning of the year and he was in many ways her lifeline. And so having only one parent here at home with her and the other so far away was really hard on her this year. And yet over and over again, I saw her dig in and just buckle down and she would be in the classroom and taking home work even while helping pick up her siblings and making it to basketball practice and all the other things that she was doing. Um, she is beyond a doubt one of the most responsible um, and dedicated students that I have had. And I'm so very excited to get to share her artwork with you tonight. Without further ado, here is Eva Stover. Thank you, Ms. B. <laughs> the person I am has dramatically changed each year I've attended high school at LRCA. As a senior, over the summer, I begin reflecting on the many different identities I've held, what has prompted each of these, and, oh, <laughs> sorry. And I realize my changes in self over time were influenced by those I surrounded myself with, the choices I made, and my self-worth at the time. This realization led me to wonder how my identity today will affect who I become tomorrow. My ideation began with trying to depict truisms that all seniors should take to heart before they graduate. I felt limited personal connection with the art I was making though, and it was kind of frustrating. I began to spiral into a lot of self-doubt about that and really started to doubt myself as an artist. Um, ironically though, that became my biggest inspiration for the pieces to follow. Um, through these failures and my evaluation of how I have 
both succeeded and failed in my time in high school, I've been able to take a step back and follow the thread. By that, I mean I have been able to evaluate where I went wrong or what I did right. And you'll see that that is the main point of my portfolio. The use of primary color acrylics was a highly intentional choice to allude to simplicity, childhood, and the process of growing up. The red thread is also a very important symbol throughout my work. It alludes to the passage of time and how various events, people, and values tie our identity together. As the thread continues through my pieces, the primary colors begin to blur, representing the nuance and complexity of adulthood. For example, the pieces 18 Candles and Laughter is the Best Medicine are made up almost entirely of primary colors. As the pieces continue though, such as in The Best Friends List and MD, you'll notice that the colors start to blur together. It's no longer consisting entirely of primary colors, representing that although things may not seem as simple as they were before, they're the more beautiful all the same. There's also deep meaning in the stylism of the various portraits. In Woo Pig and Go Cats, you'll notice that my family's faces are blurred. This is to provide a contrast to my other portraits, such as 18 Candles, and show that the uh, process of self-reflection in our own lives brings clarity to who we are, but not necessarily to our other relationships. Through this process, I have been able to sharpen my sense of self and begin to see the thread that connects who I was, am, and who I will be, which is shaped by what I do, who I'm with, and how I measure my worth. This portfolio is both an exploration of self and truth, and I hope by viewing it, my audience will be inspired to reflect over what they're letting shape their identity. I challenge them to dig deep into the uncomfortable, reflect with honesty, and know thyself better. Up next, we have Max Hanna, Max, Maximilian, Maximus, General Maxwell. Like, I have so many names for Max. I think every day that he walked into the classroom, I had to say a different one because it was just so much fun. Um, so Max first came to us your sophomore year, right? I'm, I'm, I'm getting this right. Yes? Okay. Um, he first came to LRCA his sophomore year. But interestingly enough, I got to meet Max his freshman year before he was a student of ours. I was at his parents' house at a reception for a, an organization we both help support. And I was talking to his stepmom and I was like, I teach art at Little Rock Christian Academy. Oh my goodness, you have to come meet Max right now. You'll love him, he's coming to your school next year. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And so she goes and she drags Max out from his bedroom, which, you know, I mean, he's what a 14 15 year old boy he was, did not want to come out to talk to the weird art teacher from Little Rock Christian Academy and he's like coming out and she's like Max she's going to be your art teacher she, you're gonna love her it's gonna be great and he's just like mm -hmm. <laughs> okay yeah I make art sometimes I don't like to talk about it that's it and I was like, oh, he's so precious. He's so cute. He'll be great. And then he came and he took my class his sophomore year. And oh, my word, I fell in love with this child. Like, he just has such a wonderful, dry sense of humor and this witty repartee that just keeps going on and on. His sophomore year, he didn't always know when to stop. But his senior year, he really does. Um, it's really, the growth is amazing. Um, but... He left me then his junior year and didn't take my class and I was deeply offended. And then his senior year, I didn't see his name on my list, but I saw him in an English classroom. It may have been Miss Babs before school started, like August 1st, let's say. And I walk in and I just go, why aren't you in senior portfolio? And he goes, I didn't know I could. And I was like, yes. And he was like, I'll go change my schedule right now. I wanted to take an art class. And so we get Max, and we're so happy that we have Max. Um, Max has brought so much laughter and joy and also deep thought into our classroom this year. He's really asked 
hard question of everyone. And so I'm really appreciative of the work that he's done. Without further ado, here is Matt. Hello, everyone. Uh, before we start here today, I want to thank four people, um, God, Miss Buchanan, my family, and Bob Marley in that order. Um, but let's go ahead and get into this. Um, so when I started making art this year, I had kind of been pushed into a situation where I'd never been before, where I actually had to think about what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> think about the think about the artwork I was making, you know, and that's something I didn't do a lot. Uh, but I wanted to kind of explore this, this personal journey I've been on for the last, I'd say, around two years where I feel like I really, like, became a man and I really embraced um, maturity and, you know, what it means to be a man. Um, and, you know, I, I, when I started making the art, I wanted to figure out something that showed this kind of new arising within me. So I decided to paint, uh, which I had never done. I had never touched, or I had not touched a paintbrush since I was a little kid. Um, but I figured that in this time where I was really, you know, expanding my horizons and uh, trying to understand all these parts of myself that I would make something completely new and I would try something I had virtually never done before. Um, now, Sorry. <laughs> um, I figured that, uh, you know, I, I'd first try to make my pieces very photo accurate, very um, similar to these pictures I was taking, because basically I would go uh, hike or drive to some spot that I had known that I'd been to for a long time and known about, and I, I kind of had this sense of freedom being out in the wilderness, and I felt that was something I could try to capture and you know, uh, show within my art because it was becoming so important to me. Um, but I soon kind of realized that that's not really what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to take this more experimental, uh, expressionist route. And so I started using these kind of bright, vibrant colors uh, and changing just the shapes of these things that I thought were interesting, like trees in the sun. Um, referring to my piece, uh, Eye in the Sky, uh, I had felt that once I got to that point where I made that piece, uh, I'd finally kind of figured it out and I had figured my process out. Um, and I really felt that, that uh, I developed this profound appreciation for nature through making my art. Um, but I, I, I tried to, within all my pieces, I tried to create this kind of sense of movement to show that, number one, I was out there moving to get to where I was, right? I was hiking to every spot. But uh, it was also this kind of free-flowing, kind of free-natured type thing where I, uh, I really felt comfortable and I really felt free showing these ideas within my artwork. Um, and... I don't know, o over time I just, I, I developed this very free flowy kind of process. I would usually start each painting with some random color that wasn't even very present in the painting. Like for example, that was completely red when I started. Um, but then I, I when, when I started to experiment more, I started to get uh, more into this idea of time and what I really wanted to talk about. Uh, and I developed this idea of past, present, and future where I started my pieces all depicting somewhere I was comfortable with, something that I was experienced in. And then in the middle, I made my piece uh, Big Sky to show um, Montana, which is gonna be my new home. And I, I just wanted to, after that, I kinda decided that time was something I wanted to push further so I started to develop these um, more experimental pieces. I started blending more colors together, started using more odd shapes. Um, and I created these very, I'd say, or actually Miss Buchanan said it best wherever she's at right now, um, these dreamlike pieces that are very 
kind of nonsensical, right? They don't really fit into the rest of everything. And I wanted that to symbolize my future. Uh, that's shown in, uh, yeah, those two, Abyss and Road Less Traveled. I wanted to show that um, there's gonna be unknowns that, that I face in the future, uh, but it's up to me to conquer those. And I think something I really wanted to tackle was maturity and how responsible I felt uh, when dealing with those unknowns. Um, I, I kinda, and I noticed as I embraced that idea of the unknown and being very personal to myself and the positive self-talk of like, anything that comes your way, you're gonna be able to conquer it. I got really comfortable and I started making these pieces that were really personal to me. Um, yeah, and I just think, uh, kind of to finish off here, uh, I, I just think I wanted to really show that I had become my own person and that I had been developing as a man and that I had been exploring these new horizons through basically painting whatever I wanted to and uh, painting it in a way that's personal to me, you know, painting stuff that's kind of relating to my passion. Um, yeah, as a little final note here, I'll just say, uh, to me, all this symbolizes that uh, my becoming of an adult and how, how I face these unknowns in my life, uh, and I will continue to face more as I grow older, um, are not something I should be scared of, but also something I should embrace and maybe uh, figure out how to tackle things, make things uh, kind of go in my own direction. So. Thank you, Max. Next, we have Kate Wood. To know Kate is absolutely to love her. I cannot imagine anyone has ever said the words, I don't like Kate Wood. Like, I can't, I think that's probably the first time that's ever been uttered in the history of the world. Um, Kate has this unique style. She is so her own person, and it is so refreshing and so wonderful. And what I love most about Kate is that Kate loves fun and she loves what she loves and she's not embarrassed of her Thai Beanie Baby collection. In fact, she loves it and she loves it so much she'll find out what your favorite Beanie Baby is or your favorite animal like me, it's a river otter and oh, I happen to have three of those in my Beanie Baby collection so I'm going to bring you one and it now sits on my desk and it will forever. Um, Kate is kind, she is caring, she is creative, and she is just a delight every time she walks in the room. I can't think of a time I've not seen her smiling, even when she feels terrible. Um, she still has this big smile on her face, and it's remarkable that she exudes that kind of joy on a daily basis. I'm so excited for you to get to see Kate's artwork, you'll see what I mean when you get to see her artwork. Come on up, Kate. Thank y'all for being here. Um, thank you, Miss B. Um, for introducing me and thank you for my family for coming and everyone else for being here. Um, I guess I'll go ahead. Our childhoods have the ability to shape who we become as a person. So how can we use this to our advantage? Whether this is positively or negatively, we all carry parts of our childhood with us throughout our lives. Learning to take advantage of this though is something that can allow us to use a unique perspective when viewing the world. I wanted to focus on this specifically because I still enjoy a lot of the same things that I did as a kid. Um, viewing things with an air of curiosity, purity, and love is very childlike and can evoke a kind of nostalgia for some. This carefree but straightforward attitude is something that a lot of children have but can be difficult to harness with age. 
With recognizing this, I would like to know what we can do to ta change this. It is even more important now that we look at this as it has become outdated or is seen as immature to enjoy childish things, whereas I see it as an opportunity to connect with a more pure version of ourselves. When beginning, I started off by digging through bins of keepsakes, going into attics, under beds, and to relatives' homes, presented me with many items to be used as well as more ideas. I also spent time reflecting on my past and looking for things that stood out to me while also searching for relatability. This child-to-child -child connection is something I found in things like toys, texture, or experiences like skin reunions. My piece, Kiss Me, um, plays, to that re plays to that relatability and connection that art can have through pain because it is something we've all been through. Similarly, my piece, Sandbox, represents the emotions of childhood as well as the difference between how we see the world as adults versus as children, which was done by qu creating a tool veil. Layering textures allowed me to represent this figurative and physical veil of optimism we have as children, and by experimenting, I was able to let go of any rigidity that I had surrounding my pieces. Near the end of creating my portfolio, I decided to go all out on one piece called I Spy. The idea was that I would use toys, confetti, glitter, or anything that seemed fit and just let go onto one big canvas. I ended up really enjoying the process and being able to let go and create these little scenes within one piece was therapeutic to me. As a whole, the resulting portfolio embodies, embodies <laughs> the playful nostalgia we have surrounding childhood and showcases what we can do to embrace our younger selves. Through this p process and by reflecting on my past, I have learned how to embrace my creativity as well as my chaos. Through each piece, I have grown in my own ideas and have let whatever happens happen. Glitter is often used as a representation of the nuance we have when young, as well as a repeated color palette showing the simplicity of, the way of that way of thinking. Like the way we think as children, primary colors are simple but can become complex over time if mixed. Overall, viewing my body of work as an individual and providing an individualized but connected experience is my goal, and I hope to exhibit love, kindness, purity, faith, and curiosity in all of my pieces. Next, we have Josh Brunson. Um, Josh came to me, I, I, did, was it your freshman year that you first took Studio Art One? He was a freshman and he, y'all, this, this child said two words all year long. He just did not talk. But if you know him now and you didn't know him then, I don't think you would believe me because now he is a leader among his classmates. He was in Cinderella. <laughs> uh, yeah, woo, exactly, it was so good. He is the president of our art society and, and that's one leadership role that he plays here at Little Art Christian. There is going to be such a hole left when Josh Brunson leaves this camp campus we will all be wondering what we're going to do without him because he is integral to so many places on campus. And I see so many faculty members back there like shaking their heads like this, like yes. Um, and that's on purpose. He came to me at the end of his freshman year, or maybe he's, he's like, oh no, she's gonna tell this story again. It was either the end of his freshman year or maybe the end of his sophomore year. And he came up to me and, and he, was, he was visibly upset. And he said, Miss B, I just want to be a leader. And I'm not. And I don't know how to be one. What do I do? And he talked about how he was going to pick people that he saw that were leaders on the cross country team and leaders for Christ, and he was gonna emulate them, and he was gonna do what they did. 
and he was going to dig deep into who he was. And we talked about how sometimes it just takes being brave and stepping into those places that you are completely uncomfortable. And he said, okay, I'm going to do it. And he did. And he has been so brave. And it's not comfortable for him. You know, I think it's really easy for us to look at leaders and think, that's just what they were born with. That's just how this person was made. God made them as a leader. Josh Brunson worked hard to be the leader that he is. And I could not be more proud of him. Come on up, Josh. Thank you, Ms. B, for um, introducing me, and thank you all for being here. So this portfolio, um, during the summer when we were brainstorming our ideas to um, choose a portfolio topic, um, I was kind of confused because, again, this is my first portfolio or whatever, and so just trying to like focus on a topic to do throughout the whole year. And so as I was brainstorming ideas, I was just thinking about last year, how towards the end of the year, I started making more artwork about myself. And so this year, I wanted to choose a topic that was more personable to me. And that was, of course, our school since I've been here for the past 13 years. And so um, I plan to research about what makes Little Rock Christian unique to all of us. And one of the, one of those, one of the reasons, one of the reasons why our school is different from other places is because of the community we have here. And that community, as we all know, is called Warriorville. So Warriorville is a term we've adopted to describe our community here at LRCA that encompasses the partnership between our school, families, and churches. This body of artwork explores not only what makes our community in Warriorville unique, but highlights my favorite aspects of our school. I have been blessed to attend LRCA for the past 13 years, and growing up in this community has shaped me in ways that words cannot fully explain. I have always felt that this community is unique and special, and I wanted to express my appreciation and gratitude for it through my art. By creating this portfolio, I hope to honor our school community and capture the memories and experiences that have been so meaningful to me over these years. As a part of my research, I have identified key principles about our school and interviewed um, students and teachers um, about what makes our school unique. And so in order to capture the vibrant energy and liveliness of our community, I chose to primarily work in oil pastels. So um, the layering technique of oil pastels has allowed me to add depth and represent the diverse and colorful aspects of our community. For instance, in Golden Triangle, this piece is about the partnership between our school, church, and home. This aspect of our school is vital to the community we have. And from three-year-olds to grandparents to teachers, parents and everyone else in between, we hold up this golden triangle as a reminder of our relationship with one another and how interwoven our community, our community is with one another. I use oil pastels to give a childlike um, effect, but also bring less attention to the color of its skin. This helps connect to the meaning by representing that no matter the age or skin tone, we are all connected through this partnership. As a homage to our school, our school, I constantly used it, I consistently used shades of blues and greens throughout my work. I've also created subgroups of work such as the Golden Triangle, that again represents our school, church, and family, but also as well as academics, athletics, and the arts. I chose to make a collage of photographs from previous yearbooks to give an authentic visual of what what these different aspects look at our school look like at our school. Using yearbook pictures provides a sense of authenticity to our school and shows the different ways our school pursues God through the, these different areas. The pop-off logo effect was to give each piece distinctiveness yet cohesion, cohes co yes, cohesion through <laughs> the different logos we use for each domain. Also, my digital pieces, Timeless and Senior Year, um, I have experimented with digital art. These pieces were inspired by me taking digital design <laughs> with Ms. Harrison. Um, I chose to experiment with digital art because of its versatility with different styles and its portability to work anywhere. Through Timeless and Senior Year, I gained a better understanding of Procreate and its features. 
Digital art allowed me to make more personable art about my time here at LRCA. For example, in Timeless, I wanted to showcase not only how long I have attended this school, but also the themes our school has had throughout the years. For every year, LRCA is given a theme rooted in scripture to give the expectations and vision for the year. From Rise Up in 2010 to Stand in 2010 to Dig Deep, Branch Out, and Bear Fruit this year, these themes over the years have become timeless principles that have shaped my Christian worldview. By incorporating all these elements and experimenting with different mediums, I wanted to create pieces that truly represented our school community. This portfolio has left me with a sense of pride and accomplishment of my time here in Warriorville. Reflecting on the roots and values of our school has, cult has given me a greater appreciation for the community here. Through this body of work, I wanted people to appreciate and buy into the community we have here with one another. This portfolio is a visual testament of LRCA's mission and our community shouldn't lose sight of how privileged we are to be part of this environment. I want people to reflect on how God has used LRCA to impact their lives. For me, through this process of creating this portfolio, I have learned so much about myself, including this community. As I've researched and interviewed very members of our, of our school, I've gained a deeper understanding of what makes it unique and special. I was overwhelmed by the love and support that I felt from everyone I've spoken to, and it was truly ins inspiring to see how much everyone is invested in our school. Through experimenting with different mediums and techniques, I discovered new ways to express myself, but also my ideas. But most of all, this portfolio has taught me the value of community and the importance of being so part of something bigger than myself. I feel so blessed to be a part of this community, a literate Christian, and I'm grateful for how this community has shaped and supported me over the years. Overall, this portfolio has been a powerful reminder of the love and support I have in my life, and I'm excited to see how my artwork can inspire and lift others in our community. Thank you. Last but not least, I can't look at her. Okay. Okay. Um, so I feel like I have known Addie Beardsley her whole life because she basically grew up here in Warrior Hall. Um, she was not quite toddling around, but basically toddling around in the art room way before she was old enough to be in the art room asking me before she had even taken Studio Art One, what do you think my senior portfolio is gonna be about? <laughs> when do I get to do senior portfolio? Her eighth grade year. Can I go ahead and join Art Society? No, Addie, that's for high schoolers. You're not there yet. She's been ready for tonight for at least five years, maybe, maybe longer. Um, she has been planning tonight for at least five years, <laughs> maybe longer. Um, Addie cares deeply about art. This is her place. This is her thing. And it's part of who she is. Creativity and um, making and inspiring others and, and thinking deeply about her work is her calling. It is what she will do, whether she knows it yet fully or not, but she does know it. Um, Addie has, very similarly to Josh, grown so much <laughs> since she was that eighth and ninth grade little girl who, if she was having to talk in front of people, she would be like, I mean, like, they, that would be about what you would hear from Addie. And then she'd be like, T you know, tugging on the jacket. I don't want to, I don't want to say that out loud, but I want you to come over here and hear what I have to say, Miss B. She's like, she's covering her mouth up like, oh my gosh, I'd forgotten that I did that. But she had, she did, I think, once or twice actually tug on my jacket, like, please come here and let me talk to you. But that's not, that's not who she is anymore. And so much of her portfolio tonight is about that growth and that change. And so much of that has to do with self-acceptance, coming to understand that God makes us all 
unique and individual. And when we just trust that God's work is good, and y'all, he's already said it is, then we don't have to worry about anything else. Um, Addie, God made you good. And I'm so excited for you to share with everyone tonight. No pressure. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ms. V. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, guys, those who are watching online and those who are able to come here tonight. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Um, thank you for listening to us and coming to look at our art. Um, my topic is battling perception. I chose battling perception as my topic because I knew I wanted to make art about myself and my experiences. When I began reflecting over my experience in high school, one of the biggest differences was how I allowed myself to be internally affected by my perceptions of the world around me. This difference was the first of my guiding questions. I also asked myself, how does attitude or mindset change our perceptions? And how does society impact our perception of self versus the way God sees us? My concentration, battling perception, is centered around my experience with identity, growth, anxiety, and a sense of self and purpose. I began creating artwork using linoleum stamps, ink, and watercolor. I knew I wanted to make art using a variety of mediums. So I chose to create stamps that created cohesiveness in my artwork. These stamps are present in nine out of 11 artworks in my portfolio. These are divided into two categories, one that represents perception and the rest representing growth, identity, a sense of self, and purpose. For my portfolio, you will see a repetition of images of myself, not out of narcissism, but because I wanted my art to discuss my experience with battling perception. You will also find two portraits of people that are not me. Both of these portraits are of people in my life that have made me feel seen and understood when I was struggling to understand myself. Coincidentally, both of these gentlemen care very little about the perception of the world around them. In my artwork, in my artwork you will, we will find a variety of gold sparkly shades. To be frank, I really love glitter. I love gold. Um, I've always loved it. I've always been a glitter girl. Um, there was a period in my life when I was not comfortable with myself um, to want to share that with everyone. So I did not want to be seen. I did not want to be perceived in general. So I tucked that away and I wore drabby, sad clothes. And I didn't want to be seen, so I hid my personality. I wanted people to like a meager version of myself um, until I was confident enough to bring it out again. I chose to include sparkly shades in my artwork to display that I have grown into a version of myself that does not hide my personality in hopes that people will like a meager version of myself. My first artwork, Submerged in Thought, this piece is the first I made this year. I created this project by using watercolor paint and linoleum carvings. I layered the paint and prints to get this distorted effect. I did this to connect my concentration on battling perception because the layers show multiple of the same person, which illustrates the feeling of being lost and the stamps illustrate the feeling of eyes following you. My second piece is called Bob. This piece is of my grandfather, whom I call Bob. Bob is a very special person in my life and I wanted to include him because he made me feel seen when I felt lost. Bob has a, a perspective and understanding of me that is dear to my heart. I created the background of this artwork to mimic the button-down shirts he often wears. I, often included, I also included the paw prints as a symbol of our family. My family really loves animals. It is something we bond over, and the biggest animal lover in my family is Bob. So I wanted to honor him and this artwork. Just Keep Swimming. Just Keep Swimming is the final artwork I completed this year. This, pro this project is a visual representation of how I have felt trying to trench through school. I chose to paint many versions of myself, so swimming in this overflowing sink of water to display the effort I keep into keeping myself afloat. This sink represents the push and pull and the pressure of life, and the golden background connects to my previous body of work I made my junior year that uses gold to represent the goodness of God. I wanted to bring this connection into this piece because even when I'm surrounded by God's goodness, I will focus more on the strain I feel trying to keep myself afloat. I chose to include my positive stamps and the gold and my perception stamp in the water to create contrast between the meanings of water and gold. As I have grown into myself, I have been able to break free of the pressure of what I perceived or assumed people thought of me. This increased confidence 
and myself is also aligned with my spiritual growth. I am beginning to understand what it means to be made in God's image. Knowing that I'm made in God's image and his likeness with the purpose has given me comfort and allowed me to grow significantly as I was uniquely created. I hope that by looking at my portfolio, you will be able to see the work God has done in my life and how blessed I am to have been to know him. Thank you. Would you just join me in giving everyone one more round of applause? <laughs> Students, I'm so proud of all of you. I know that this is not an easy thing to do. Making a piece of artwork and hanging it on a wall is incredibly vulnerable, but then getting up and talking about it in front of a group of people is even more vulnerable, so thank you. Um, we have one more thing we're going to do before we dismiss. Um, we have our National Art Honor Society courting ceremony that we are going to do. So at LRCA commitment each year, commencement each year, National Art Honor Society students are distinguished by the colorful cords that they wear. They are rainbow to represent all the colors that we use to paint. Um, at this time, seniors, I will call your name. When I call your name, Miss Hendren and Miss um, Harrison will be back at the back of the stage to cord you. If you'll just walk behind the table and then come through the front of the table to go back down the ramp so nobody trips and falls over anything. That feels safer. So first, Addie Beardsley, come up the ramp and then back down the ramp. Addie has taken Studio Art 1, Honors Studio Art 2, Honors Studio Art 3, Ceramics 1, Ceramics 2, AP Studio Art and Design, and Honors Senior Portfolio. In addition, her senior capstone project this year is art related. Addie's been a member of Art Society for four years and a member of NAHS for three. This year, Addie served as our Vice President of Art Society. She also collaborated with Emanuel Baptist Church's Women of Influence event to organize and arrange an art piece, which she created and then had participants add into. She's received awards and recognition from the historic Cane Hill Society, the Arkansas Governor's Mansion, and the Arkansas Artist, Young Artists Association, as well as LRCA art shows. Addie is most proud of the fact that she's learned that God has a place and an intention for artists and being able to create art is a gift from God. Addie Beardsley. Next up is Josh Brunson. Josh, has, yes, please. Josh has taken Studio Art 1, Honors Studio Art 2, Yearbook, Digital Design 1, Digital Design 2, Ceramics 1, and Honors Senior Portfolio. Josh has been a member of Art Society for three years and a member of NAHS for two years. This year, Josh served as our president of Art Society. He serves every year with Warrior Paint Pals and uses his art to serve both his church and school media teams. Josh is most proud of the ways that he has persevered within the arts and experimented with a variety of media and classes leading to growth. Josh Brenton. Up next is Eva Stover. <laughs> Eva has taken Fundamentals of Drawing 1, Fundamentals of Painting 1, Honors Studio Art 2, AP Studio Art and Design, Honors Senior Portfolio, and also Eva's capstone is an art capstone. Eva's been a member of Art Society for two years and a member of NEHS for one. She serves with her art by participating in the Memory Project every year, and she said she looks forward to the Memory Project every year. Um, Eva is most proud of the way that she has diversified her skill set and grown, and she's received recognition from both the LRCA art shows and Wildlife of Arkansas. Eva Stover. <laughs> and last but not least, Kate Wood. 
Kate has taken Studio Art 1, Ceramics 1, Honors Studio Art 2, Honors Studio Art 3, and Honors Senior Portfolio. Kate has been a member of Art Society for four years and a member of NAHS for two years. Kate serves in the elementary with the Elementary Art Club and has donated her art to local charity auctions. Kate has received awards and recognition from her artwork from Historic Cane Hill Society, the Arkansas Association of Young Artists, and LRCA Art Shows. And Kate is most, most proud of how she has grown as an artist and in her art. Kate Wood. That concludes our, oh, I was supposed to do that. Whoops. There's the picture again. That concludes our program for tonight. You are all invited to a reception in the lobbies where you can view everyone's artwork. You got to see a tiny little sliver of what they've done. The students will be available beside their portfolios. Feel free to pepper them with questions. Um, students and guests. This is the charge to new members of the National Art Honor Society, but I wanted to leave you with this and then one other thing. First of all, take of the world its colors and forms, its lines and textures, its balances and movements and spaces. Combine all these into a beautiful statement of what it is to be human. Give back to the world the same element of beauty that you as an artist take from it. Create beauty in the world with your talents and your living. And our final thing, this is a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to per perfect the praises offered by your people on earth and grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>